Okay, you look good till your marriage. After that, do whatever you want. But then, if I had to look like you, I'd date myself. Yeah. Abi, I'm moti hu, to I'm heroine. How will I become? So I remember one of the earlier dates of my life. I was standing ready to go out. You know, looking at myself in the mirror, and I'm like, wait a minute, my hair is too frizzy. And then that one thought spiraled into, my arm looks fat, or am I showing too much cleavage? Should I be wearing this? Should I be wearing that? What shoes do I wear? And when I was on the actual date, the worst part was that instead of focusing on the date, I was more awkward and conscious, thinking, oh, am I looking nice? Is he into me? That kind of stuff. Even into well into adulthood, I realized that often when we're choosing partners, we're more worried about. How they will find us physically attractive, as opposed to what's inside. <laughs> <laughs> what is inside? Huh? Education. <laughs> Personality. Personality. So we went on to the social media universe and asked a question, hmm. which was, uh, "What are some of the comments that you've uh, heard about your body?" And uh, we have some responses here. An ex once told me your buttocks have become so big that they require an indicator of their own. I wish I had such a funny, witty ex. Yeah. I didn't, which is why he's the ex. Correct. This seems like a comic dating, by the way. Mine starts with "I'm sorry." <laughs> it's every woman's wet dream. <laughs> okay, this is uh, "I'm sorry." I don't date men below six feet. As long as he can reach the tube light and all and yeah, change yeah. and stuff, I'm fine. He has to be handy, handy and handsy. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. A classmate once said to me, "Oh no, why do you run like run like a girl? Mm. Run like run a girl? Run like a girl? <laughs> Are you sure you're straight?" This is where the toxic masculinity starts tickling them, and you know, then something happens. Absolutely, and this is that. Mine started this time. A guy left a comment on my pic. You have huge knees. But like, who is this person? They've run out of things to objectify that they've suddenly yeah. come to the knees. Knees, it seems. There's no one that looks like me on TV in ads or the movies, so I'm constantly reminded that this isn't how I'm supposed to look. Poor I feel thing, it. Man. I feel it. I feel it too. I'm, feel I'm it. We his, all do. him or her. Okay. I have to tell you this one thing that happened. Okay, so the first audition I ever went to was for a toothpaste brand. Hmm. Okay, and I walked in. Casting director was like, "You're too gay for this," like to my face, and I was 16, and I was like, "But gay people also brush their teeth." <laughs> When I decided I wanted to be an actor, my first worry because anyway I never thought of acting as anything other than hero heroine. Dumb of me, acting is across the board. Um, but I was like, "Abi, I'm moti hu, so I'm heroine. How will I become?" And uh, it happened also when I started working. They were like, "Okay, you can audition for the best friend. She's plump and loves to eat." I'm like, "What else is interesting about her?" It's a vicious cycle because okay, media uh, casts people who are fair, casts people who look a certain way. Yeah. But it's also because audience is responding to that. Fundamentally, deep down, writers also write things in certain boxes. Um, there's a lot of body shaming that goes on on dating apps. Oh, the bios yes. only they write Ugh. gym fit only. You you tell me what are the things they write? <laughs> gym fit only, and if I work out, you must also work out. <laughs> But then if I had to look like you, I'd date myself. Yeah. When I was on dating apps, uh, you only see torsos or you only see unsolicited pictures mm. of. What you don't want to see—it's crazy the amount of, you know, the absurd standards of beauty that they also adhere to, and they kind of superimpose that on the next person. When it comes to a dating app, so nervous about it, constantly nervous about it because I delete and log into the app, delete and log yeah. into the app so many times. Unfortunately or fortunately, my dating has started after I got into comedy. So most of my dating, most of my dates are your interviews. fans. Yeah, no, or <laughs> potential employees. Tell us about your dating tales. I don't know, yeah, you know, like because I have been such a fan of uh, you know Broadway and stuff. I go only into. Means like, your dates say, are theatrical. From my end, it's very one-sided <laughs> because I saw dates or I heard of dates that you know only succeed. If you're a certain way, mm. that started like kind of incorporating that in my dates, and then that's one of the major reasons why I'm single. The escapist route of I don't put myself out there more so that I don't change myself. Right. Which just never works because it's you're just running away from nothing. Have you considered making changes, or have you made changes to your appearance to make yourself seem more desirable to your partner or potential partner? No, uh, uh, I was asked to, uh, and that that would have just like changed me completely. Like, In what yeah, way? My physical appearance, and then like the fact that I was 
extremely comfortable in myself was a problem you know so um because he was in the closet so but i was like but then i was already on television and stuff so i was like but then when you're dating me then now how i'll go back in the closet which closet yes. can so you know fit all this fabulosity unge i how can i unge like it's not a button no like aaj no. sunday hai to aaj <laughs> switch it off like i do do the mistake of changing my appearance for the partner uh not because the partner asked me to is because in my head i think that's what he wants i was very uh, ashamed and un attracted to myself mm. and my first boyfriend actually kick started the journey of uh, me liking myself or finding myself sexy attractive mm. all of those things and then i got into that other spiral of oh do i need a man to validate me is that now finally because i've got a boyfriend am i in this boat of now i'm okay then i moved on from that relationship and i realized i am one of those people if i do find a sensitive and supportive partner it really does kind of become the wing beneath wing wing wind beneath the wind beneath the wing beneath, wing beneath the wind <laughs> got it got it got it w beneath the w yeah so if i am that sort of person that i need somebody who is supportive and encouraging and i that translates into how i view myself also and i'm not ashamed now or i don't feel like i'm any less of a feminist for admitting to that now yeah. that yeah my partner makes me feel sexy and I feel sexy because of that. Yeah, that's a. But also, it's also the way people view each other. Yeah, and then you make them also feel sexy. No, yeah. of course, not a one-way street. It's reciprocal. Now that's what I'm saying. I want to ask you about your drag of the Rani Kohinoor. Do you feel the pressure or the need to maybe change the appearance, like have larger breasts, wider hips, conform more to that feminine kind of ideal? Your drag is not just about the look. Hmm. it's more than that like as a comedian or as an actress or as an as as an actor and as a as as a creative person you're more than what you look like so i've realized that whether i have big breasts or if i don't have big breasts it's my body i am also depicting through the the art form of drag so i will perform in a sari i will perform in a bikini i will perform sometimes you know topless but like with a head full of you know hair and and or sometimes even just like take like wear a ball cap and just go bald on stage it's so wide that canvas so why should i restrict it to what people think will be attractive i i believe that everyone over here like any person is in drag because you're born naked and then the rest is drag within our community we are i'm not going to sit here and say that we are fairies we fart rainbows all the time and stuff like that doesn't happen <laughs> we are at each other's throats which should be also improved because the, we there is so much fat shaming fem shaming you know color shaming uh, you know preference shaming mm. like oh he's he's such a bottom and she's so top you know she's like a fem top and all of these things she's a dairy queen she's a uh, curry queen it's all like there is so much shaming within the community and then again i go back to the fact that it comes from internalized hate mm. like it comes from hate which people have sort of probably thrown at this person and that person has internalized it and not sort of you know dealt with it in the right way so he or she or they feel that it is okay for the next person to go through this because i went through it now my final question to both of you and myself i guess is what is your idea of sexy <laughs> <laughs> my idea of sexy i think um i'm still figuring it out it's a work in progress and from what i have understood till now it's that my that the sexy is the closest to what you are someone says be yourself and it's treated as a very philosophical statement it's not it's a very practical yes. advice yeah be yourself it's 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 two words but it means a universe of things absolutely and i know that being sexy for me is somewhere in that universe and i need to find it i'm aware of that right now that's where i am but my thing also i was also very in this crying as soon as i would felt in the spot or attacked or any topic which was related to my body and weight i would immediately withdraw into a shell and just weep inconsolably till a point i think it was maybe 5 years ago where i just started to separate all the validation and not like it was just like okay body is there it's one part of my life it mm. is not me in its entirety like i am not this body yep. it's a temporary house i got very spiritual on myself <laughs> about it and 
Yeah, I'm healthy. I'm happy. I'm giving myself these uh, yeah. uh, affirmations. Why can't you let your own authentic self shine? That's damn sexy to me. Yeah. And I think everything that a person has to offer and has understood and has evolved and actualized to an extent where they're not going to let you decide their narrative. That's very sexy.